Hey guys, Hannah here. We're filming this on June 1st. It's exciting, it's so warm and beautiful out, and many of our plants are ready to go into the garden. That might sound late for you, but remember we live in a subarctic climate, so today's the day for us. If you look at the leaves here, many of them have their true leaves, and as you've seen in some of my other videos, uh, the roots are coming out of the bottom of the pots. We've been planning the garden, how we're going to plant everything. So let's go have a look at the raised beds. So over here are our raised beds. It took six runs to the local farmer to fill them up. And we're really happy with the results. We're really happy with how they look and the layout of them. Big thank you to our volunteers for helping build them. Now it's figuring out where are we going to put all of these amazing seedlings that we have. We did not pre-grow everything and we based that decision on the seed packets themselves. Often seed packets will have a symbol on them, a hand holding a seed, a hand holding a seed and a little pot with a seedling, or just a pot and a seedling. These three symbols help give you an idea of how well the plants will do direct sow or being pre-grown pre inside. Because we have such a short growing season, anything that said you can pre-sow pre or pre-grow, we decided to do that. And I have talked about that in other videos. Uh, but those that do not do well to pre-grow, we're just gonna directly plant those outside. So that means we have a lot of uh, plants to move outside and also a lot of seeds to sow today. And uh, we'll get some of it done today. Now it's very warm out. That means we're going to wait to actually transplant the seedlings until the heat of the day is over. Uh, I have learned from other channels that that's a good thing to do and I totally get it. It's a shock to the system for the plant as is. Uh, so, you know, trying, we want to try and give it a good environment uh, conducive for success uh, when we actually put them out. But it just, it feels really exciting getting everything out finally. All right, we're gonna start with some seeds and uh, we're gonna start with these beautiful summer carrots. When we say it's summer vegetable, that means it will be ready earlier than say a fall harvest. So these will be ready earlier in the season. I think they're just so beautiful. Look at those colors. I'm very excited about these. This is the packet of seeds that came in the package. And there's a million and one ways to sow carrot seeds. A popular method is to actually just sprinkle them in the row and as they sprout up, thin them out and take the baby carrots. Because there's not that many seeds in this package, I'm gonna actually attempt to do sort of one by one seeding. They only need a couple centimeters in between each one and we'll still probably need to thin out as we go, but then I can just try and use all of them efficiently. I'm, I've drawn a, a line um, that I'm trying to follow. It's, it's hard to see. And I'm basically planting them in the line. They don't want to be very deep. And to be honest, as soon as it leaves my hand, I can't see it anymore. All right, guys, we finished planting the majority of our garden, so we're gonna take a little bit of a tour. We have six raised beds in this main area. And as we walk around, you're gonna notice that we do have some plants, and those are the things that we've been pre-growing. And then you also notice some, what appears to be dead space. And those are seeds that we put directly into the ground based on the recommendations from the packet like we saw earlier. So let's have a look here. This bed has green cabbage and red cabbage. And then in the middle, we've got beets beet seeds. You'll also notice these metal arches over the top and that's for a net to protect the cabbage from bugs, which is a common problem up here. In this bed, we interplanted kale in the middle and carrots on the side. What we did here is I have two different ages of kale seeds. So I have some that are rather large, rather large in comparison. This one is clearly older. I think this one's older by about a month than this one here. 
You'll also notice that the color is really light. I'm actually not sure why that is. I'm curious if anyone knows why are some lighter? Maybe it has to do with how much more sunlight this one got than these. Um, but on the sides here, we have our winter carrots. So these will take longer time to mature and they'll be better for storage. So we have these two rows here. In this bed, we have the Brussels sprouts with those harlequin carrots that we saw earlier planted on the side. Those are so beautiful. Back here, we've got a bed of onion sets. This year we did onion sets, so basically small onions that will grow to size underground uh, rather than doing seeds. I really would like to do seeds next year, uh, but I don't know too much about it yet. Now the onions are planted very close together, but they grow underground. I did do the recommend recommended distance apart, but I have a feeling that we will go through about halfway through the season and take out some of the onions before they're fully mature. And that way it will give the rest time to grow larger in size. So we'll see how that one goes. This bed here is filled with leeks. We have two different types of leeks. We have a, a Chinook leek, which is sort of your regular looking one. And then we have a Northern Lights leek, which is this beautiful purple leafed kind of thing. You'll notice in the garden in general that there are some things that look like they don't belong. There is, there are some weeds around. Um, and that's because we basically just took this from the farmer and anything and everything was in it. So that means some plant life as well. So we will have to go through, do a little bit of weeding and also probably put straw over to help kill the weeds and keeping the space open for the plants themselves. This last bed here actually has three different things in it. You can only see one right now. In the center are some more carrots, one more row of carrots. Uh, and on the sides, the plants that you do see, these are broccoli. When I went to go put in the last sets here, it was a really awkward distance between here and the end. So I decided take out those last two plants and use this space for something else. So I put more peas in here. We're gonna see where else we have peas, but I put a few rows of peas in here. And then as they grow up, I will need to build a structure for them to climb. Um, but yeah, these are the raised beds and uh, I think they look fantastic and it's so much fun coming out and seeing how they're doing. Let's go on to the herb garden. This is the herb garden. You can see it's quite a beautiful shape. It was like this when we moved in, although we've changed some things around. There were a lot more flowers in this garden before, but they had kind of gotten overgrown. So we decided to save some on this side plant a new ring around there, which are some mixed flowers, and set in this beautiful lavender bush. We bought this, this is a perennial, and we bought this with the hope that it will come back every year, but we're not sure how well lavender is gonna do in this climate. Uh, we feel like we have this nice little microclimate here where it can get a little bit warmer, but we're not sure, we'll have to see how it goes. But it's so beautiful and it smells so wonderful and we'll be able to harvest this for some maybe potpourri in the house or, or just something nice. We are going to let these flowers continue that were put here before. We think they're really beautiful and we want to have flowers, of course, for the bees to come and pollinate everything. Uh, and yet Amias has built this gorgeous herb garden right here. I mean, I think it looks so lovely. It's not totally filled. We have more space in it. And we have a combination here of things that we've grown ourselves and things that we bought because growing them wasn't super successful. So here we've put mint. Now we have contained the mint in its own area uh, because it is quite aggressive and we don't want it to sort of invade the entire space. But we do have a bit of space next to it. I'm not sure what we're gonna put there. Uh, we have two different types of mint there. And then we have thyme here and then a large space with nothing at the moment. We ended up going a little basil crazy we grew some ourselves, and in the meantime, we also bought two different types. So we have this nice basil here, and then we have this beautiful, beautiful purple basil. Oh, it's super nice. And here we have two different types of rosemary bushes. I did try to grow them myself, uh, as well as lavender, but it was just unsuccessful so I went okay I'll buy some rosemary bushes. These chives are from our property 
we have some more that I didn't move over here, so we could definitely grow this area. But I mean, these come back every year. They're perennials. They're very strong. So we've been using them in things like omelets um, and just our cooking in general. Uh, so they go really fast. They're first. So we will need to harvest more of it and dry it for the, for the, season, the coming season pretty soon. On this side, we've got dill. This is really beautiful looking and we grew this all ourselves. So I'm really happy with how that looks. And same thing with the parsley, actually. We grew all of this ourselves. The oregano here, uh, we bought that plant. And uh, yeah, really happy with it. Here is a nice ring of berry bushes, red currants and black currants, which you have seen in other videos. You'll notice there are quite a lot of weeds, which we will need to cover. Maybe we'll do it with straw um, or some other type of mulch that we use. Uh, we want to keep this one pretty clean from other things. We want all the energy to go to the berries because we do rely on the berry bushes for our own consumption throughout the winter and spring season. All right, guys, this is the strawberry bed that we planted a while ago. We, of course, bought these plants, but as you saw, these strawberries are doing so well. Remember I planted radishes and peas in here as well? Well, look at these radish plants. They're doing so well. In the past few days, they've just really started to come up. And they only take about six weeks to mature. So this will be one of our first things, one of the first things that we harvest. And a few of the pea plants are coming up in the back, but they do take some time. You'll see that we also have some weeds in here. Now, this one I'm letting stay because I think it's a pretty flower and I want to see what it is. So we're just going to let it stay. I did pick out a few others that were just, we don't need that many, but we'll have a, see, have a look at what this is. Let's go look at the other strawberry plants. These are doing equally as well, but I do wonder how the shade from this bush that's coming up now is going to affect the growth. I wonder if it's going to inhibit the growth at all or if it'll be fine. We'll have to keep an eye on it. But if you come over actually and have a look at this plant in particular, this one has so many flowers on it. It has this bunch here. One, two, three, four, five. And then another bunch with about three or four. I mean, that's just incredible. And we have some larger fruit there as well. Oh, nothing like fresh strawberries from the garden. These are actually one of the first things that I put into the ground after the strawberries. And they're looking really well. Beans are super satisfying to grow because the first leaves that come out are these ginormous leaves. So it's like exciting from the start. Uh, but they're doing really well. They're growing. Uh, they're really happy. Uh, there wasn't anything here. I'm not sure if something has been planted here before, but what I basically did was dig up a trench a little bit, and then I mixed some new planting soil in with the soil that exists down there, as well as a little bit of fertilizer. Uh, but yeah, these are doing well, and I have loads more over here. These are the last of my beans in this corner. I, this was a, the one over there was actually the second spot that I put them in because I only could fit a few in this spot. In the empty space in the middle, I have more radishes and more beets. You can already see the radishes coming up. As I said, they go really fast, only taking about six weeks to mature, so they'll be ready really soon. Um, the one problem with this spot is that you can see under the overhang, it's been raining and it's dry under where the overhang is. So we do need to make sure that these are getting enough water. Here is a combination of nice flowers and probably also some weeds. This year I am going to prune them back a little bit to see what I want to keep and what we think is just not necessary to have. But I wanted to give it one more year so I could actually have a proper look at it. And then over here we've got beautiful sunflowers, ginormous ones. So that will be lovely to have here. That's basically it for the, the garden that's planted, but we still have more work to do. The greenhouse is basically done, but we need to put in a couple raised beds in there. And we also need to plant the potato fields and a few more raised beds. We haven't planted spinach yet. We haven't planted potatoes. Our tomatoes are either still in larger seedling pots or pots, but we want to transplant all of those as well. Let's have a quick look at the potato fields. And then I think this video is over. This is the potato field. It's really big and we are doing what is called the root stout method. 
That means we don't put soil down, we don't till the earth, we basically just put a big pile of straw and scraps and everything, and we put a potato under it and it grows. Now this will be the second year we're doing this. Last year was not successful, but we think that the main problem was actually that we just did not have enough straw. The other problem is that some mice wanted to come over. This year we are going to be planting a type of bean that is commonly used when planting potatoes, which wards off mice and little critters. We're hoping that will work. Because it's such a big space, we might be able to plant some other things in here just to test it, which is always fun to try different experiments in the garden. We have so many leftover seedlings that we won't be able to pawn off onto all of our friends, so we might throw a couple in the garden here. It is a big space though. We eat a lot of potatoes, so we're happy to have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. We love showing people our garden. I can't tell you how proud we are of the work that we've put in. Sometimes we forget the amount of work we've done in a short amount of time. So it's good for us to stop and reflect on all of the beautiful things we have growing here. We can't wait to see you next time. Bye.